Welcome back to Ridge City. We have a lot of work to do today. To start off with, apparently we've already hit the maximum amount of education going to be supplied by our budget. So it's time to hire more teachers. I think we're going to move up to 75%, at least for now, because I want to save every penny that we can. And that little boost has given us a lot more headroom. We now have 171 capacity versus only 66 that are eligible. Speaking of which, you can see that our population is pretty stagnant, but the city's actually looking for some more residential. So I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Just putting a little bit here and there. We're going to have to move this power line soon. Maybe start connecting some of the suburban and urban areas. This is definitely not the way it's going to look long term, but it will do for now. I also want to get rid of this sort of power connection, but I'm not exactly sure that we're able to yet until there's more buildings connecting these two sides. So why don't we go ahead and do something like this as well? I think there's enough buildings now. We can use our demolition tool and get rid of a bunch of these, which is going to save on money as well. We'll still be keeping this line here because it is all we have that's connecting this side of the city to this side of the city. And it looks like that worked out well. So now we can go back in and rezone all of this that was being taken up by the power lines. And we should have a nice little block appearing there. Now, as you see, I sort of been going with this every other road grid, which means there should be a road going up through here. So before any houses move in, I want to dissolve that and add a road for the future. I'm not going to be using it quite yet, but it'll be there when we need it. We also received a quick tip in the comments that said the recycling center does actually take 100% of the garbage, not just the recyclables. So I'm thinking we get rid of this landfill as soon as possible. Unfortunately, it's already 4% full, and I don't know if we can drop everything off into the recycling center, but our budget's doing okay, so we might be able to pull this off now, which may save us from having to deal with this huge landfill later. Alrighty, we can go to our landfill site and click empty the building into another facility, and once this landfill is completely empty, they'll just start using the recycling center. The big difference is the amount of garbage it holds versus the upkeep. The recycling center can process 24,000 units worth of garbage per week whereas the landfill can store my goodness 8 million units so the recycling is definitely going to be more expensive now the question is where are they bringing it i'm wondering if it's going out of the city no i think they're actually bringing it to the recycle center except when they drop it off here they have to go all the way around here to hit the roundabout to return to the landfill oh i love the traffic management you're doing a great job dumpster truck now the difference with the recycling center is it'll process X amount per week, but the statement that says the facility recycles the waste and produces raw materials from it is what I find the most interesting. I don't know how we gain access to those raw materials or if this is just a case we're magically selling it to some other city because I also don't see it in my sort of industry area. So I'm not exactly sure how that works yet, but maybe we'll unlock it sometime in the future. But if someone's getting all my wonderful recycled goodies and we're not seeing any money in return for it, I'm going to have an issue with that. And I'll also be keeping a close eye on this landfill. It's only 1% full now and still being emptied. But we want to recapture this $160 a week that right now we're spending on the upkeep of the landfill site. And since we're going green with the trash, I kind of wanted to go green with our water drain as well. Unfortunately, we don't have the funding for it quite yet. But we're going to be changing to the water treatment plant. But its upkeep is pretty significant at 320 a week, and right now we're only bringing in an extra 294. So we're going to keep squeezing improvements and services where we can. But already since the start of this episode, we've gained about 200 residents, thanks to our wonderful little residential zoning here. But now we need a little bit more commercial and industry. The industry is just going to have to go pound sand because this pollution is bad enough. And that's just ground pollution. That's not even counting the disgusting smog that we're throwing into the atmosphere either. So for now, we're gonna work a little bit on commercial. Remember, we have our wonderful medical clinic here, and I like adding a little bit of commercial inside of our residential areas. Being that these will all be high density residential one day with apartment buildings and that sort of thing, this will likely be your corner neighborhood market, maybe convenience stores, I'm not 100% sure, but for now, I want to put a little bit more commercial in here. I think we'll just do another 4x8 brick and see how they like it. The reason why is because I might split this in half again and sort of combine JM Mort Street and Eilert Way and make this another residential area. Or 
we might just save it for some more services. For instance, eventually we're going to be unlocking a high school, and I think this would be a perfect area. Good news, our landfill site is completely emptied, so we're just going to go ahead and bulldoze it. Now, unfortunately, because it had been so long, we didn't get any money back, but at the minimum, we're going to be gaining a little bit extra in our budget. I think next we need to upgrade this industrial road here into a proper street. Being that it's a dirt road, it's not exactly helping all of our dump trucks and industrial traffic getting from here to there. So I think we're going to go with the standard two-lane road, although I do feel bad that they don't have sidewalks. But I can't seem to justify having sidewalks inside of an industrial area. Of course, all these folks do look like they're walking to work, so maybe we should keep that. And there is no difference between the cost of a two-lane road versus the cost of a two-lane road with sidewalks. Let's try it out and see how it looks. That's not too shabby. The new Glen Sullivan Drive looks pretty good. And while we're at it, I think we're going to go ahead and connect Ryan Healy Road to Mikonala. Something like this. Because it's going to give us a little bit of an area here where we can zone some more commercial. Unfortunately, this means that we're going to need to do some road maintenance. Mason Lord Drive will now extend across into the industrial area. Just like that. And Ryan Healy Lane will become the side street. Absolutely beautiful, huh? And already this should help a little bit with the traffic flow and everybody having to turn here. Now they have the option of going down here as well. How do I get these people to stop parking on the street? I'll bet you there's a policy we're going to be able to unlock later for that. Looks like we finally have enough money to put down our inland water treatment plant. Except I sort of want to put it off on its own. This area here will eventually be some high-tech industrial. That's not going to have a lot of pollution. But a wastewater treatment plant is always sort of going to infect the ground with some pollution. It also sort of makes sense, because I don't know if you've ever been around a wastewater plant, but they tend not to smell great, because you're literally processing and filtering raw sewage. So I think we're going to take another wonderful little dirt path all the way out here. Luckily, we have convenient access to our water pipes down here, and now we can just put down a nice little wastewater plant. And I think this is a great spot for it. And look, even Mary Clark was very excited that we're not going to be polluting our precious rivers. Well, Mary, we still are, because we haven't gotten rid of our drain pipe quite yet. Now, we aren't polluting our rivers, which means we can get rid of all these power lines and no longer have to pay the upkeep on them. Looking at our water info pane, we can see that we have a sewage draining capacity of 68,000 cubic meters per week, but we're only producing a little over 20,000, and that's only at 75% of a budget. So why don't we try to lower that? Let's go with 60%. That's much better. Now we're still only using about 50%, but we're only paying 50% as well, which is really going to help out the bottom line because, well, we're broke. With that earlier road upgrade, I think we're going to add a little bit of commercial here. Maybe a nice 4x8 zone. We're also going to break down and give them more industrial. They keep begging for it, and quite frankly, we want to grow because more people equals more dollars. And more dollars means more services, which, once again, means more people. It really is a vicious cycle, huh? Speaking of which, we're really starting to push up against our electricity limit. So unfortunately, we need to fund the power plant a little bit more. We'll go up to 85%. Nickel and dimes, people. Nickel and dimes. There we go. Now we have plenty of room for growth. First and foremost, I apologize for the clouds. I still haven't figured out how to remove them. I'm sure there's mods to be able to do that, but then I gotta get the mod that allows us to have achievements. It's a whole big thing. Oh, and look at that, they're gone. So now we can finally talk about what I wanted to talk about. Which is, right now we're sort of stifling growth. Because of the layout of our city, it's all a little bit too horizontal. And we want to grow down vertically as well. So as we get more money, we're going to continue to extend Miko Nala Ave. Really, do you have to start raining right now? This is also going to start begging the question, though, of what the overall design is going to be. But I think, ultimately, we want to sort of hook this around, make a nice little bridge, and then hit into this other connection here. And I think that's a nice natural route for that road. Alternatively, what we could do is make a sort of crossroad here, and then have Miko Nala connect directly into it. But I think that would lend itself to be a much more grid-like pattern, which I like to stay away from. It would also give us an opportunity to sort of develop around this river, and that could be some very high-wealth areas there. As I was building up some of these roads, I realized I 
sort of introduced a problem here. I don't like how these commercial zones are so small. Additionally, I should be separating the intersections off of Mikonala Ave a little bit better. Now our traffic flow is still at a wonderful 94% because, well, of course it is. But in order to protect that, we don't want these two intersections to be so close together. So we're going to make some quick modifications, which unfortunately is going to cause Mason Lord Drive to go away. Now this is much more like it. Mason Lord stops, then we have a couple of nice commercial areas here, and then the industrial area is sort of separated right here by Whiskey T. Fox Street. And by separating those intersections such a long distance away, it should in the long term keep traffic from backing up on one intersection or the other. There's the wonderful hot dog van again. Speaking of which, I wonder where Brian Matzik is. They're somewhere in this city, but I don't know how to go and find them. Let me know in the comments below if you do. Now this will give us a wonderful opportunity to add a little bit more commercial here as well. And we should probably go ahead and upgrade these roads. There we go. Looking at the traffic routes, I do see one problem. This has a potential to be very bad. We need to put stop signs at least on the entry to Migonala. Oh my goodness. It's Hot Dog Van's cousins. It's Bug Spray Van and Donut Van. Taking a look at our wonderful water pipes, we still haven't had to expand them. Even though we're slowly adding more and more residential, everything just sort of works. And look at that. We are now Worthy Village. And we've unlocked a whole bunch of new stuff. Another two square kilometers, a bunch of policies, district specializations, some emergency services with some unique buildings, a couple of industries. Oh, we're definitely going to have to get into some industries. Some self-sufficient buildings. I've never seen these before. Organic and local produce on the commercial specializations. And the wonderful firehouse, police station, and high-capacity elementary school. We've also unlocked the Panda Sanctuary, the Temple Complex, and the Oriental Pearl Tower. Now, before we get to the business of placing that fire department and the police station, which is going to be must-haves, I wanted to show you sort of our limit and our perimeter of where we're going to have high-density development. And that's going to be right here along Jason Stewart Drive. Everything past this is going to sort of start developing into more of suburban and rural areas. But being that we already know that, we can just go ahead and fill all this in at once. Now you typically want your fire station to be closer to your industrial because they have such a higher fire risk. But being that we have zero fire department right now, and we're at a 75% fire hazard, I think anything will do better than what we have. And I don't want to put them all the way over here next to the residential, so I'm sort of thinking to put them here, which kind of makes me want to move the medical clinic. I think we'll keep the medical clinic here because it sort of makes sense to have a little dock in the box close to the neighbors. And we'll just put our wonderful police station and fire department right here. And by positioning them this way, we can actually put the fire station right here off a of jaundice road so they have very quick access to get to Mikonala. So when there is a fire, especially over in the industrial area, they're going to be able to get there pretty quick. But notice we still did not want to put them directly off of Mikonala Ave. We're getting all sorts of buildings being upgraded now because of the addition of services. Speaking of services, let's go ahead and reduce some budgets, shall we? And since we are doing okay on the cash, I think we're going to upgrade all the roads that are in our sort of future high density area. Of course, we're adding sidewalks, which pedestrians will love. And it's actually time to extend the water network. Another thing I realized is we don't have any water tanks. And if you open up the water pane, it says we don't have any water reserved in those tanks. Considering we have disasters on, I think it'd probably be smart to add a water tower or two. They are fairly expensive at 240 a week, but the last thing we want is a disaster to take out our availability to water. Now, unfortunately, you can't put it anywhere where there's ground pollution. And there's a lot of ground pollution here. So I think we'll sort of put it over here which I have some plans for this in the future. Look at that, isn't that nice? Except, oh my goodness, why did you dent the ground like that? No! Let me try building it off of the pipes and see if that helps. Okay, that's much better. Woo, that was gonna be an emergency. So I think I've misunderstood the basic function of this water tower because it's been online for a little while and all it's done was increase our water availability and it's not actually counting as a water tank. So, goodbye. Here's what it is. They're tank reservoirs you put places. Well, that's a little bit of a misnomer. 
Because truth in fact, when you see these around your neighborhoods, yes, they provide some sort of pumping, but they also just straight up store water. Well, my video game immersion is destroyed. Speaking of immersion, we're going to go ahead and buy a large chunk of land because I think it's high in time we put some specialized industry down. And taking a look at our natural resources, we have some fertile land that comes up over here. There's also a little bit over here, but I don't know if I want to dedicate some of our riverfront to farmland. There's some oil and forestry here, then oil and forestry here, but we don't have access to the oil industry quite yet. So the decision on which one to buy is pretty simple. It's going to be this one, because we want access to the farming resources. And who would have known the land is pretty cheap? Now here's all of our beautiful farmland, which it's actually conveniently located next to the highway. That way trucks can be able to get on and off pretty quickly. And unfortunately, we don't have access to a lot of highway tools quite yet. As you can see, we've literally unlocked nothing, including the highway ramp. Now if we wanted to, we could get extremely janky and just come right off of this road, just like this. But I'm sure I don't have to tell you how many problems this would end up causing. So when I'm keeping in mind the overall design of how Ridge City is going to look, I think we might tie it into this bridge system that we were going to use before. So this was going to be one major avenue, but it'd also be nice if we were able to do something like this. Or maybe we junk that whole plan and just have a regular sort of industrial road that comes down through here. Eventually we would have a nice highway connection, but for right now this is going to have to do. I'm going to try to design this road, keeping the fertile land in mind, because we definitely don't want to end up putting roads on a bunch of what could be great farmland. This could be an awesome overpass for the entire city, though. So here's what I came up with, and then subsequently got rid of. I don't know how this is going to look. Give me about 400 more attempts, and maybe I can find one that I'm going to be happy with. Okay, this is going to have to do. I made a modification to the original design that I think is important. Instead of all that industry having to take a left onto Glen Sullivan Drive to get all the way down here, we now have this giant road, incidentally named Dave Hammer Street, that comes all the way down here and intersects with Sulphur Star Road. Actually kind of makes it look like a claw hammer, doesn't it? The good thing about this design as well is it sort of lends itself to intersecting with our existing pattern pretty well. Maybe something like this. I'm not really sure, but those are not our problems right now. But the great thing now is we can start our beautiful farming industry. Now I'm not exactly sure what kind of farming Ridge City is going to be specializing in, but if you have any recommendations on what sort of helps out with the story of Ridge City, please let me know in the comments below. Painting these districts has always driven me absolute batty. This is not something, once again, that anal retentive people should be doing. Because no matter what you do, the lines are never going to be smooth enough. And I know this, and yet I'm still going to continuously try. Over and over again. Oh, this is going to be absolutely perfect. Welcome to the wonderful farming district of Angry Forest Incorporated. And right now, Angry Forest Incorporated is just a farming district. We don't actually have access to the farming industry until we reach a population of 1,400. We're only about 200 people away. Since we're on this pain, it looks like I need to increase the garbage processing budget. Except we're already at 100%. Well, the only thing better than one recycling plant is two. In our desire to get up to 1400, we're going to throw down some more residential. And this looks like a perfect amount there. That should get us there easily. And right on cue, we're now a tiny town. Which finally unlocks not only industry, but also parks. We've been waiting for parks for quite some time. We have wonderful pedestrian areas, landscaping, event policies, park policies. I mean, we have policies coming out of the wazoo now. Where's the policy that says, do not park on my roads? Got some beautiful new roads, though. Very nice. Some canals, fencing, some new buildings, which will help us make everything look pretty. And I was all excited about some of these new buildings, like the public library. Well, look at the size of this library. Has anybody ever been to a library this big? It's about three times the size of that elementary school. But we are going to put down at least the high school. That way we can start making our populace a little bit smarter. So expensive though at 560 a week. But don't worry, that's where budget cuts come into play. Now we probably could have waited on the high school a little bit, but I have big plans for Ridge City. That includes offices and high-tech industry. And our couple of schools here are going to go a long way to making the population smarter. And now it's finally time 
to start building up Angry Forest Incorporated. Now to start off, Angry Forest Incorporated needs a farm main building. And I don't think it's going to be right off of this main road, because once again, this is going to be sort of a large collector road that's going to meet up with Miko Nala somewhere around this junction here. So I'm thinking about having a nice little roundabout here that sort of connects the main road with what's going to be maybe our headquarters area? Oh yeah, absolutely. Look at this. Now we can put our main building, say, right here. So I may have done this a little bit backwards. This is Evergreen Ranch. This is Angry Forest Incorporated. This is definitely a farming district, but it doesn't necessarily tie in with the name of the actual farming industry. I don't like that at all. So we're going to change this to something that represents more of the agricultural section of Ridge City. And once again, we've gone with the ever-creative Ridge Farms. And now we can rename the industry to Angry Forest Incorporated. The first thing it wants us to put down is some crops. That's pretty easy. We're going to sort of design a nice little pattern here. Oh, that's disgusting. Here we go. That's much better. We're sort of going to design a nice little pattern here, which will give us plenty of room to put down some fields. Now, we have a couple of options. Small animal pastures, small fruit fields, or small crop fields. We'll be able to switch these back and forth based on what the comments are going to tell me. Because as it stands, we're not exactly sure what Angry Forest Incorporated is growing. And I know what you're thinking. Angry Forest Incorporated would have been much better for a forestry industry. But no, 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 no. This is much better this way. Just go with it. We'll start with some wonderful small fruit fields. I went to put down the, the small fruit field. And it's like, no, it's not in the industry area. Yeah. So I think this is the point where my DLCs are sort of getting crossed. This district here despite being an agricultural specialization district, is not an actual industry. So I need to remove all of Ridge Farms. There we go. And now I can actually paint the industrial area. Much better. Except now I'm going to have to play the silly game of fixing this to look nice again. All right, that looks somewhat nice, right? Just agree with me, it looks nice. Angry Forest owns all the land from the interstate all the way up to Sulphur Star Road. Oh, it looks like we also need to start off with some water and some electricity. I think this is going to be a perfect opportunity for a wonderful water tower. Not only will it look absolutely nice, but it'll also keep us from having to run water lines all the way from the main part of the city. And I'm assuming the farming industry doesn't require a huge amount of power source, so let's go with some wind turbines up here. Eventually I'd like to move a wind farm over here, but we don't have access to that tile quite yet. So we're going to move it down here, a little bit further off of Sulphur Star Road. We'll start with one and see how many we need in the future. And unfortunately, it also means we're going to have to put a bunch of ugly power lines here. Now that they've had their water, they also want to be able to treat their water. And I was thinking about one of these Eco Inland water treatment plants to sort of keep the farm feel going. And they have to make sure that the ground stays nice. But they cost 480 a week. So we're going to go with the standard inland water treatment plant. And to figure out a location for it, we sort of built an entire roadway that we said we were not going to build. But I only built this to make sure that it's going to connect cleanly in the future. And now that I've seen that it does, we can go ahead and remove it. It's not 100% refund, but it's decent. But what this has given us is the opportunity to put our wonderfully dirty inland water treatment plant all the way off on its own. And the ground pollution that it's going to cause isn't going to interfere with our wonderful Angry Forest Incorporated. Now, I don't ever recommend having two separate systems. I just thought it sort of makes sense in this case. This is a completely new development and is solely dedicated to the farming industry. It's going to throw off our balances quite a bit because the water being supplied by this area isn't servicing all the residential and commercial folks over here. But our meter doesn't realize that. And now, after a fair bit of time, in order to save up enough money, it's time to finally put in our small fruit fields. I think we're just going to start with something simple, with just a few along this road. Doesn't that just look wonderful? We have a small fruit greenhouse and two fields, and they're all growing oranges. I don't know what we're going to do with these oranges. They may not be oranges next time. I'd also like to put down some of these small grain silos, except these are the most expensive small grain silos you've ever seen, at $6,000. Let's hit that fast forward button again. There we go. With enough money, we can throw down some grain silos. It doesn't do much for us, other than keep some of the crops stored. 
But going over here to our main building and clicking industry area info, you can see we don't exactly have a bunch of output because we don't have any production buildings to do anything with those oranges. Not a big deal though, because we're just gonna export all the fruit. And look at this, it's our first fire. Oh, wonderful. Way to go, fire department. Why are you, why are you leaving? There's still another building on fire. The last thing I wanna do today is add a little bit of flavor to this elementary school. We finally got some parks and plazas unlocked, which even comes with a few assets that we'll be able to throw down. But in this case, I think we're going to start off with a small park. Unfortunately, the small park doesn't want to fit where we need it, and that's right next to the elementary school. So I think we're just going to bulldoze these nice people's homes and put it right here. Now don't complain, just think of the children. We wouldn't want to have those kids crossing the street in order to get to the wonderful park. Now it's right next to the school. And unfortunately, we need to go ahead and put a fence around our elementary school. You never know with people these days. But because we already put our park down here, we can't put it over the park, which means we're going to have to dezone some more area. No big deal, they'll find a new place to live. We're also going to dezone this area and bulldoze these nice people's houses. And then we're going to take our lovely fence and put it right here. Oh, doesn't that look nice? And now our school area is sort of protected by a fence that clearly no adult could hop over. I think the last thing we're going to do is add a couple of wonderful tables here. And that way the teachers have some place to sit while the kids are doing their thing. Oh, absolutely perfect. And then we'll put a nice trash can in there. Oh, look how beautiful that looks. And then we're going to add some nice greenery in and around here. We're not going to do anything too special. Add some wonderful bushes couple more trees. I mean, these look real nice, doesn't it? And so for our wonderful Bob Ross time, we sort of expanded out our little elementary school campus, which incidentally also had the added benefit of adding a park to the neighborhood. And now I realized I forgot to upgrade a couple of roads. That should help a little bit. We also have a nice big area right behind the high school, but I'm going to let the comments dictate what goes there. I'm thinking maybe a basketball court, some other recreation facility? I don't know, but you can bet we're going to find out next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this wonderful second episode here in Ridge City. We were able to expand our traffic network and design what our highway connection is going to look like. We added a bunch of new residential, along with some essential services like fire and police. We threw down a high school, and we also added the wonderful new Angry Forest Incorporated. That is not a forest industry. It's a farming industry. Just go with it. So until next time... Happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.